Here we are again. We're just testing. Hello. We're going to show you number three. Number two. Why are you trying to save a dead joke? <laughs> Welcome back to another video of Do You Know What To Do? I'm Paul. And I'm Grant. We're going to show you today how to do outdoor cushions. Right. They can actually be kitchen pads if you want. They're the same thing. Yeah, same the outdoor principle. cushions pretty much would have outdoor fabrics. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to use outdoor fabrics only if you bring them in when you don't use them, of course. Okay. So bring them out when you need them and then uh, bring them in when you don't. And then you don't have to worry about finding a special outdoor fabric or foam for that matter. So can you like bring it in during the night? So yeah. you can have it out maybe just a little bit during the day and then bring it out so it doesn't get sun bleached or whatever. Right. See, the problem is, is obviously, like you said, the sun and or the rain, the moisture. If it's a covered porch, you don't need outdoor fabrics uh, or foam. But if you do get a lot of sun, it will bleach quicker if it's not an outdoor fabric. But like I said, this also applies for kitchen pads as well. I believe this fabric is UV resistant, so it, it, this one it keeps its color yeah. quite well. This one's for a client of ours somewhere. I can't remember. Crystal City, Arlington, Virginia. It doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. Great guy. We love working with him. We've done work for him before, and this is for his outdoor furniture. Right. He has a little uh, balcony on his uh, He's penthouse. Up there. Right, yeah. exactly. He's really high up there. And um, unfortunately, the ones that he had for his existing furniture, obviously, was flapping in the wind. The back area just had the um, Velcro uh, straps. Like right this. Here. This is the original. We saved it for you to see. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the idea of Clean. making... Velcro, right, exactly, yeah. um, straps there. So we put the Velcro straps right there so that it holds it down so the, the front the front kept going up and slamming back down. When the wind would blow, because he's up there pretty high, so in, in his um, location, and I'm sure his education as well, he's a very <laughs> smart guy, but um, up there very high, the wind's constantly flapping these things around, and he couldn't stand it. So yeah. he so. asked us to do something about it. We came up with that little idea, and we think uh, he's going to be happy with it. Yeah. So we're going to show you how to make these, and here's the thing. You can buy these at box stores like Ikea, Therefore, I don't know, uh, World Market, wherever you are. I don't know. I don't know what your situation is. You can buy these pretty cheap and inexpensively, but to get them customly made, it, it does get expensive. Right, and especially if you're going to have to be uh, buying the foam and the covers. So we're just making the covers right now. Right. Buy the foam at a cheap, inexpensive place. You can use the foam. And what we're going to show you is, is how to make a pattern out of it. It's so easy. You can make uh, uh, 10, 20, whatever you need, and you don't have to pay much at all for it. But if you do get it customly made or custom made at a upholstery shop, it's going to cost you more money. We're going to show you how to do that. First step is you're going to have to measure what ones you did buy that do fit very well for your application for your furniture. So you're going to have to measure the dimensions, get to the dimensions, and that will help you cut out the fabric. So let's get started. All right. So to get started, you're going to need a pair of scissors. All right. You're going to need a writing utensil. Some cloth tape. Cloth tape and or a straight edge, you know, a ruler mm -hmm. or a straight edge, and some spare fabric. And the reason why is because we're going to make the template out of some scrap fabric. You don't want to use the fabric that you're using as your top fabric in case you, you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And okay. then once when you use it, it's done. So Right, exactly. So Grant's going to show what we did to get the measurements. It's very simple, All easy. Right. So what we're going to do is, we're this is the old cushion right here. We're going to stick with the old cushion as we did beforehand. Mm -hmm. We're going to take it, place the cloth fabric down so it's easier instead of trying to do it midair. Do it is. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put it to the seam, so that's in the back, and we're going to roll it all the way around. The reason why we're doing it to rolling it all the way around is because we're not going to be doing a front seam as they did. Mm -hmm. So they did do a front seam, but it's just a waste of thread. You might as well to. just roll it over. Yeah. Right? So we're getting 39 right here. 39. And a half. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. And then right across, we're getting 17 and a quarter. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. So now it's finished measurement. So you're going to have to add an inch for seam allowance. Right. Half inch on each side. You've probably heard this before. In fact, we might even be able to make that just 17. Okay. All right. All right. Very simple. Now, the next step is what kind of thread are you going to use for outdoor use? If it's for a kitchen, you can use 
pretty much anything, right? That won't snap. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the outdoor is best to use polyester, okay, UV protected. And if you're in a pinch, and I'm not saying to do this, but what we try to do, we try to do videos for uh, the, the everyday person, not mm -hmm. somebody who has all this equipment. Um, what's they the already know what to do. Right, if you're going to spend that much to get someone else to do it for you. And they already know what to do. So you could use, but I'm not necessarily saying do this, if you absolutely are exposed to the elements outside and you need outdoor fabric or a thread in a pinch, you could use a lightweight fishing line. And I said a lightweight one. I don't want to mess up your sewing machine. Because it's kind of similar to monofilament. Right? It is. But monofilament, theoretically, is made from nylon, which is not good for outdoors. Polyester is made for outdoors. Is uh, a, a, a fishing line nylon? Eh, I don't know. It goes in the water. I mean, it seems to last for years. We like mm -hmm. fishing. So, uh, you know, you could try a lightweight uh, fishing line, uh, not a heavyweight, a lightweight fishing line. But in anyhow, just go get some polyester. You'll be fine. For outdoor use. And you might be able to find it at Michael's or some other you could, big box store. You I don't could. know. We're trying to work for people, with people rather, that, that don't have all these things available, but they do have something like a you know, big box store mm -hmm. that's kind of easy. They sell fishing and you know, all that stuff, and you just want to do this outdoor stuff. Do not use cotton thread outside. I no. promise you, you've got one season and that thing's popping open. Okay, if you leave them outdoors. Mm -hmm. If you don't leave them outdoors, then you're fine. Bring them in. You can use, like, you know, whatever you want. Right. Okay, right. if you bring them in. Okay? All right. So that's the first step. Now, since we got the measurements, we are going to be working on our template, correct? Right, exactly. So we had some scrap fabric. This is one of them we did, but we'll show you what we did here. We got our measurements. Right. And as Grant said, left to right, we came up with, we think, 17, mm -hmm. right? So we rolled the fabric out this direction. And we went up, so the fabric is like, here's a salvage, selvage, whatever. Selvage here, selvage, we've been corrected on that word, but that's okay. Selvage here, selvage there. You roll it out this, this direction, okay? Mm -hmm. And we went the, the distance over. And that's called railroading. Railroading, uh, correct? Left and right. It's railroading, yes, if you go this direction, mm -hmm. yes. Up the bolt would be that direction. Gotcha. Okay, so selvage, selvage. We rolled it out like this, okay? Then you would get... Your finished measurement, cut it. Gotcha. You said what, 17? 17. So we need 18. Right. Because that gives me a half inch here and a half inch here for sewing, right? Right. So we measured over, got a straight line first, marked it with a, a T-square, which I don't have. It's over there. But a T-square, straight line. It's clean. Mm -hmm. Cut it off. Measured over, 18, straight line, cut it off, right? Right. So this is the actual width or left and right of our cushion need okay so we cut that off then we fold it on top of itself like this as you see mm -hmm. okay and I came over from the end a half inch made my mark came over did the same thing half, half inch, inch right so these marks which I hope you can see well on the camera is 17 after I finished showing it right okay. there all right. So since we are folding over, like you said correctly, why waste the thread and the time to sew up the front of the cushion? I don't know if they can see this or not. Let's bring it back. To sew up the front, we just rolled this over. Okay. Right. Now that does change your measurements though a little bit because you're not going to be adding two half inches. No. Correct? You're just going to do one half inch. When you right. roll over, it's a good question. You just you're going to add just uh, a one half inch. Okay, so I think it's best if you give more than what you need here. What I mean by more than what you need is this right here. Right, so just in case if you make a mistake or if you make the line too short, or too long, you can work with it. It's a lot easier to okay. do that. Yes, it's a lot easier. So it's folded over here with no seam here. This is going to mimic, or this is mimicking the actual cover itself. Finished. Finished. So then you gave me a measurement of 39, I think it was 39 and a half. 39 and a half, yeah. Okay. So we added a half inch to that, and that comes up 20, 20 inches. No, 20 and a quarter, I'm sorry, 20 and a quarter. Because 39 and a half, half of that, okay, because you gave 39 and a half all the way around. Correct. Okay, well this is only one half of that. Mm -hmm. okay? Plus a half inch. Plus a half inch. 
So that comes up 20 and a quarter. So give me that calculator there in that, in that pallet. That's what we'll do. So let's see. If I did this right, we got uh, 39.5, okay, mm -hmm. divided by 2. That's 9 and 3 quarters. Uh, 19 and 3 quarters, rather. Okay? So I had to add a half inch to that. Okay. That would be 20 and a quarter. Okay, so what you want to do is, I, it seems like, <laughs> I know it's confusing, it, it does seem confusing, but the problem is, when you roll it over, you might be thinking you still need to add a, another inch, but you are cutting out the other side at a half inch as well, and that's what the mistake is, right. is they're thinking, you're thinking is, oh, okay, so let me do a full inch. Don't do a full inch. Don't do a full inch. Just because, do a half. Because that'll give you an extra inch. It's kind of confusing, but you'll get it when you understand it. Since it's folded over underneath itself, when you cut a half inch out here, you're cutting a half inch out on the other side as well. Right. So when we wrapped it over completely, we didn't put a seam up the front, okay? You get your total amount. And then you would divide that in half, which ours is 39 and a half. 39 and a half. Divided by 2 is 19 and 3 quarters. But we need a half inch to sew up here. Right. Because this would be too big if we just cut it like this. Or, um, yeah, well, then you wouldn't sew it. That wouldn't make any sense. But it, it, you need to sew it. <laughs> you need to close it up. Right. Okay? So that's what we did. And that gives us um, 20 from the end right here from the fold with our half inch is 20 and a quarter. Okay? Then we knew from the factory, meaning his original covers, mm -hmm. Joey's covers here, it's, it goes over uh, about an inch and a half. I'd say so. Okay. So the next step is we're trying to get you to make a template so you can make more and more covers as much as you want. Okay? And to make it as simple as possible because you don't want to be guessing or figuring this stuff out when you're in the process of making your cushion. You know, where's the Velcro go? Where's my, where's this uh, tab in, which we're going to talk about as well. This is your sewing allowance yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so once you have this, you know, make as many as you want. So we have our half inch sew in here. Right. Because this total thing is 19, or 18, excuse me. 18, so the finish is 17, as we said before. Right, so I did the mark here, the half inch, the mark here. So that is about an inch and a half, okay? Mm -hmm. And then... We needed to, to, to come in the, the half inch, like I said. So, excuse me, one second, hold on. It's about, okay, we did two inch. So we came in about two inches okay. from the sew line, okay? Right there, two inches. I hope you can see this well on the screen. So what he's talking about the two inches is he's talking about where are you going to place your actual straps, your Velcro right. straps. Right. We're going to start it two inches into the cushion right. from the actual finished sides. Well, so corners. from the 17. Not the 18, because we're going to be thinking, you're going to be uh, if you do it the 18, cutting you're yourself a half short. inch. Right. right. So that's why this mark on your pattern is very nice as far as the sew line. This is, represents the sew line. So we're going to come in two inches uh, from the sew line. Now our Velcro is one inch thick. Right. Okay. So I made my first mark. At oh, the two inch. That's where our Velcro starts, at the two inch, like that. And then we're going to come over one more inch and make another mark. That represents our Velcro strap. Where the Velcro is going to be placed. Right, exactly. So if you wanted to, you could just simply mark two and a half inches. Ever. But you know what? I'm confusing you. That's not necessary. All right. <laughs> so we're going to come over, like I said, seam allowance, two inches. And, or you could just do three inches, guys. Okay, whatever, persons, whatever you want to do. It's just figuring out where you want your velcro to be placed <laughs> right. he's got it whatever you want to do so then i gotta get the foam and so do you you got inside gotta, this cushion inside this opening right here because you got right. your velcros here now maybe yours is a little bit different maybe you know yours are i don't know i don't know where yours are maybe yours are over here it doesn't make a difference but if you can get a wider opening that's fine now the good thing about this particular video we're going to show you how to do it on the on the, on the kind of like the inexpensive Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the word cheap, but on the end expensive because you're not using a, a zipper. Because some people are like, eh, I don't want to buy zippers, you don't need a zipper. The problem with a lot of these things is that it's the barriers of getting the supplies, where am I going to buy this, it's not worth it, by the time I'm done I could have gotten this. We're trying to make it where you can make things for yourself Cheaply inexpensively. Or inexpensively. Eh, in <laughs> inexpensively. So that's not what we're quality wise. To do. Right, right. Quality is still good, it's yeah. perfectly fine. But um, like kind of on the fly, if you would. 
okay? You don't need a zipper for these things, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Velcro straps here. I'm going to come over, I came over about a half inch, and this little mark right here, which I hope you can see, which represents, I know it's upside down for you, but it's three-eighths of an inch. Then I came over in about roughly a half inch from the Velcro, half inch. Then came out, I came down three-eighths of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, and then I made this line because this represents about three-eighths of an inch. Actually, I'll take a photo of this too and put it up on the video on the side so you can see it. Right, and this here, thank you. What this does here, this helps us have a little flap, if you would, to sew them closed. Now, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good, okay? Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to make when you're done. That's what this helps us with, with a zipper foot on your sewing machine. It just gives you a little bit extra allowance, so since mm -hmm. you right. um, will have the foam inside there, the foam is going to be pushing up against there, and you need this, that, what is that, an eighth of an inch or so? It's about an eighth, yeah. You need that eighth of an inch to get your foot, uh, your your sewing foot in there and start sewing. All right, it's going to be a bit of a struggle, but we're going to show you how to do this real quick mm -hmm. um, as far as getting this inside right there, um, that eighth of an inch. But that's what this little lip is for, okay? So what I did, um, for a recap, okay, we cut it to the length or the total width of what we need, which includes our seam, seam, allowance. seam allowance. Okay, so that came up 18. We came in a half inch, half inch. So these two lines, one, two, represent the finished product. Exactly. And then we came down from the top down, including, meaning the fold, mm -hmm. a half inch. Okay, which ours was 19 and 3 quarters. A half inch more would be 20 and a quarter. I made a mark here, 20 and a quarter. I made a mark here, 20 and a quarter. Line all the way down. Line all the way down. Then I decided from that factory piece of uh, uh, foam, we said two inches, even though it's a little bit less, but it doesn't make a difference. Two inches I came in, mm -hmm. okay? I made our Velcro mark, came over the width of our Velcro, one inch. Right. Another mark. Then this is where we got to squeeze our cushion in, mm -hmm. okay? I came over a half inch, half inch, three-eighths of an inch for the sewing lap. The extra seam lift, allowance, whatever. right? Exactly. Now we have this problem that Joey has. We've got to work with the flapping cushion right. at his penthouse. So what we have is I came down. We made a mark at his, uh, at his, at his place, at his house, at mm -hmm. his, his penthouse. And we made a mark, and I don't have it here, but it doesn't make a difference. It was one of the older cushions. We took one of the older cushions. Right. We had it inside the actual chair. Then we marked it on the chair and also on the cushion where we wanted the straps to be. Right, the new straps that are right. going to solve his problem. At the front, because he doesn't have them now, but right. now he does. Right, exactly. Now he, yeah, exactly. So the old ones didn't have it, as he just now said, or put new ones. So I went from the front. I think it was, uh, maybe that was a two-inch. I was on. Uh, no, that was two and a half, but it doesn't make a difference. That <laughs> was two, two and a half inches from the top back, okay? Right. Made my mark, made my mark. One inch for our Velcro, made a, a one inch gap mark, and um, that's where we're going to put our um, new set of Velcros. Right. I'm going to do quotes because it is new. It is new. Yeah, so that's where your new Velcro, you ain't going to need to do this. But if you do, now you know what to do, right. and you can also use ties. Right. Ties are just simpler because you don't have to deal with the hooks and the loops, which one goes where. And you don't have to buy ties. I mean, you don't have to buy Velcro. You can right. just make ties. Right. So, out of the uh, existing fabric, you just right. fold it over and sew it. And we'll show you that in uh, a video years from now, but we will show <laughs> we'll you We'll never show you. No. You can use ribbons. You can Trace use whatever secret. you want. <laughs> you can use whatever you want. It won't make a difference. So, you don't need to use Velcro. If you do, you got to buy the Velcro, which is called the hook and the loop. Right. Okay? Because the hook and hook, don't, don't work. work. Loop and loop doesn't work. No. Okay? Hook and loop. Just just do ties. Just do ties. It, it's simple and it's easy, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you, have to, you don't have to really worry. You still have to go in. You don't really have to worry about the one inch width and, you know, it's taking up too much space. They make half inch, three quarters. It's simple. Right, it's simple. But we're going to show you how to do Keep this with Velcro. Keep it stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Not you. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to cut this out here, right. all right? And we're going to leave this alone because that is our actual width. Right. Okay. 
So I'm going to simply cut this excess off. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, real quick, it's great to let it run long. Don't, if you want to, go ahead, but I'm not going to do it. Make all those measurements on the actual cover itself. Right. Okay? Let it run long. Do your, your measurements, then do cut your it. template. This do is your template, template, then cut it loose. Right. So we're going to cut this out like this. And don't forget that three quarter or three eighths, mm -hmm. because um, if you cut that off, you kind of wasted a good template. You know, it does get to be a bit of a struggle on the sewing machine. So if you want to make it more than three eighths, it's up to you. You make it a half inch. It's your cushion. You know, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is make a small snip right here, so I can transfer it to the uh, actual fabric where the actual velcro will be placed. Coincidentally, we. Um, it's important to have this template because it turns out that we only have a very small amount of fabric oh, left. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't order enough. So I mean, you we ordered enough, more. but yeah. you want a little bit more just in case. We just had just enough. So it's good to have the template because if you make a mistake on the actual fabric that you're going to be use, using, it, it's bad. Yeah, it is. And um, like you said, that's perfect because you use less expensive fabric with a cheap template right so make the template first and the bonus is you can make so many of these things all right so all this right. is done we're going to roll out the fabric and we're going to get right back to you right. All right so we have the pattern cut out and we laid it on top of the finished fabric correct now we went over the pattern enough uh it is important at where you place the actual uh template mm -hmm. so you place the template right up against the fold so right up we, here we took this fabric right here, this is the uh, client's fabric. You're mm -hmm. going to take it and you're going to fold it over. Now, right, we have the correct side right. in. Okay, so the this is the wrong side. We folded it on top of itself, just like this is. So inside, correct side to correct side, fold yeah. it over. Then we took this one, this template, put it onto the actual folds. Because if you cut out these folds, like let's say you bring it down too far, right? You're cutting, you're cutting, and you go all the way around. You're going to be half inch short, or whatever you or whatever didn't, it is. You know, look out for. So, so you make don't it even. You really don't want to do that because you're you negated the reason why you folded it over. So you don't have a seam. You're going to have a seam. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. So what you want to do is you want to make sure the fold is to the fold. Get as close as possible. Then even right. fold put, the fold. Put a weight on it, and you know it's not going to move. Right. If you don't have a weight, just simply hold your hand there, because you do. Sometimes the fabric will crawl, but not that much. I mean, come on, yeah. it's not running from you. But <laughs> you know, you do need to keep it still. So you can just hold your hand here, and you're going to simply cut this out. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have it all cut out. Right. And the next step is we need to make the marks for where the Velcro goes on the actual top fabric. Right. Because we did uh, we did the snips on the on the uh, template. Mm -hmm. Now all we got to do is transfer them to the actual. Um, correct fabric right but we're also going to need to do the velcro straps and our velcro is one inch okay so all we're going to do is make them two inch and this here happens to be two inches obviously you could just find something that's going to give you a straight edge and give you two inches mm -hmm. that's okay. equivalent yep so ours is working out very well do this here. Now this is doubled over. So um, every single one you cut makes two. It makes two. We only need four. Right. Okay. Because we're putting two there and two up top there. So what we did, and this is how you're going to do it, or you can do it, you take the original here and see how long it is. Okay. So let's unstrap this one. I've already done this earlier before you were here, but <laughs> um, this came up seven inches. So you need a half inch for seam allowance, so I made ours seven and a half. Right. Okay? And, um... That's about it. That's pretty much it, yeah. We work over from there. Right, that doesn't look too straight here, this, this uh, end here, so I'm just gonna try to eyeball that, clean that up. So, we're gonna make seven and a half inch marks, okay? Yeah, seven and a half, like so. I don't like this pen. <laughs> I don't know how I got out here, actually. Okay, so seven and a half. Seven and a half. Make a mark here. And this is just, uh, it's just to make it look a little bit better. Because you could just have it where the Velcro is uh, seen. But that's, that doesn't look that good. So all you have to do is yeah, you saw it yeah, over. You won't like that. 
and actually real quick if I may go over this one is this is a little bit of a different design than we're used to but and we, you may I may like how you say if I may a if bit. I may this is a little bit of a different design for Velcro than we're used to for the straps. We usually uh, cover, I believe, both sides, right? We have, yeah. We've covered both sides, but this one doesn't. This, the uh, hook side is a little bit shorter than the loop side, and the loop side has the actual fabric on it. So when you cover it up, when you close it up, it actually covers up the hook side. Which I like. Yeah, it makes it simpler. You don't have to cut out eight instead of, uh, or you don't have to only have to cut out four instead of eight. So it makes it a lot simpler. And we're just following whatever the originals were. And uh, these uh, pen marks here, we're going to flip them over because remember we said that the correct side was in. Correct side to correct side. And we're making little X's to know which side is the wrong side because this fabric doesn't really look like it would be that much different, but it is always good to stick with the correct side to the correct side so you don't have any castings or anything that looks a little bit different. Uh, with other fabrics it may be quite obvious, you know, that's the wrong side. But You're with right. this one it, it isn't. Hopefully your fabric isn't too thick either because we're going to sew, or not sew, we're going to, well we are going to sew, but we're going to iron this down. Right. Okay, so Grant is folding over the uh, Velcro strips and ironing them down so it's easier to sew. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I cut all the hook, this is the hook and the loops, and I chose earlier for these other three that we completed, I chose the loop. You can choose any one you want, the hook or the loop, just make it consistent. Mm -hmm. So all we do is basically hold this up to one that is completed, and take it over to the sewing machine, and sew straight on down, all the way down. And you leave a little bit of excess, correct? I did. I leave a little, a little, a little too much, but that's okay, because I don't like wasting stuff. But you make it a little bit longer so it goes right to the end. If it's short, you know, and can't add it but you can always take away but I, I, I did an inch or half inch extra it looks more like three quarters but it's a little bit more than I needed so basically I'm going to sew the fabric section obviously here and then cut that off oh yeah and also real quick with the uh, strap uh, the straps right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the straps you just want to fold it in like so so that means you take one edge you fold it in toward the middle you take the other edge you fold it into the middle and then you iron it down Instead of just folding it straight in half. Because if you start folding straight in half, you're going to have the cut edge. It's going to start to fray. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Fold it in the middle. Yeah, very good. Very good point. Okay. So I'm going to go over there and just simply sew it um, together. And then I'll be right back. I'm going to show you. So I finished all the loops on the Velcro straps. Right. They're sewn, ready to go, up, down, on the sides. Okay, right. now we got the hooks. Yeah, we finished cutting the hooks. We cut these at five, and we cut this at, what is this, seven? I think it was seven and a half, seven to and allow half. for the seam allowance. That's right. So we cut this, this is five at and half seven too. and a half. Okay, so five this is half. five and a half and seven and a half. We cut it a little bit shorter, the hook, because of this. This is kind of cool. What it, it is. does is the hook is this one right here. It's mm -hmm. a little bit shorter than the loop and the reason is you fold it in underneath so this would be your leg or your uh, or the back of oh, the, yeah, the chair. Yeah, the frame, the rail, back right. of the chair. It'd go around and it would connect to the bottom right there and this would go over and around and covers the whole hook Pretty. of the Velcro. So that way you don't see it and you don't have mm -hmm. to do, um, what is it called, Velcro on or the straps, the fabric on both of the straps. On both sides, so right. if you are thoroughly confused as I am, <laughs> you get well, the you point. don't really care. Yeah, but it's just a little thing. You do need to remember to make it just a little bit shorter. In this case, two inches <laughs> than the other strap. Just roll it over and cover it up. That's it. That's, That's right. how to make it complicated. Folks. That's right. That's right. When you do not succeed, cover it up. That's right. All right. We'll just use ties. Yeah. I mean, it makes it, you avoid, avoid all ties. of this. Right. Avoid all of this. Just right. use ties. Exactly. Just let it blow up to your neighbor's <laughs> That's yard. That's right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on because now what we got to do is we're going to put the um, the hook with the loop. And the thing you need to do is make sure that these are 
Um, yeah, that's okay, right. Here's, hook, here's a hook. Mm -hmm. I mean, the loop, rather, excuse me. This is the hook, and they don't go together. No. Okay. They go uh, away from each other, so away they both go other. in yeah. kind of like the same directions. Here's the hook. Here's the... Man, these things are confusing. That's okay. Here are the loops. Loops. Here are the hooks. Both right. are facing toward the table. Yeah. Right? And you want to keep it that way when you sew them together. All right. And now to make a little a little trick uh, or give you a little trick to make it easier is bring them to the sewing table if you care to do it now because you want them to be um, uh, lined up, okay? You don't want to actually sew them like that. Would it be devastating? No. no. Absolutely not. But you still want it to be as easy on you as possible and a finished product that looks very good. All right. So go ahead and sew them right up here just about maybe, you know, quarter of an inch, you know, whatever, tack them. That's what we need to do is make them stay together. And then we're going to put them into the actual cover itself. And move away the uh, template here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put them inside like that. And we're going to take you over to the sewing machine and show you how to do it. But to keep them straight, because you've got to go on the inside of your cover, right. okay, the actual top cover. And we're going to lay them down like this. And then sew over top. Now, remember, I made those notches because that tells us where we need to sew them or put them, place them, the straps, right. when you're sewing. Because if not, I don't know where to put these things. Like here, here, right. right. Don't go too deep because you're only sewing a half inch. Just do a little bit of a notch so you can tell where you are. And that's what we did here. This little notch right there. Okay? Right. I know that a And that's just for the placement. In. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and simply tack these together like this, just as Grant said, right. okay? And then we're going to come back to you. Now, Grant has all the, um, the uh, hook part sewn onto the straps. Correct. Okay? And what we're going to do is place them in their uh, positions with the top cover. Right. And as we already shown a thousand times, we snapped, we snipped, snipped, mm -hmm. we snipped right where it's supposed to be, and we're just going to lay it right there. And right. then map it all out, bring it over to the sewing table, and bang, you know? <laughs> Make it all consistent. So all the hook sides are going to be down, okay? But they go on the inside, okay? So I snip here, okay? So there's a snip there. I don't think you can see it, but I hope you can. Snip there, snip there. And the Velcro goes down the hook side, that is, like this. And then over here, if I can find it. Yep, there it is. Just like that. Thank you, Grant. It goes in between the two snips like that. Be consistent. Don't accidentally put one up underneath mm -hmm. this cover and then one down because that's not going to work out. Make them all the same direction. Okay? Mm -hmm. we'll put that nice. one there. So. And that's it. Now, when you can, sew from a closed end like this to an open end. And that's just in case open. Mm -hmm. It's not really open. open. It's open. It is open. No. Yeah, to open it, and that right. is so that if you have any of the fabric shifting underneath, you can square it out before Correct. you end up stopping for That's the right. final product. That's right. Something like that. No, you're right. Yeah. You're entirely right. If it's real thick, it gets really difficult, especially on a sewing machine that is not a commercial machine. Hmm. It can be more of a problem, but it is definitely easily done. So. All right, so what we're going to do is bring you over to the sewing table, and you're almost done. done. up to about right here and then stop. Don't go past here because you're going to close up uh, where you're going to put in the phone. Don't forget the back stitch. Alright, so we're finished with the sewing and right. you are going to fold that right side out and I'm going to take the original I'm going to cut it free. Didn't have zippers. So we're just showing you how you can do this. If they did. 
Well, you don't have to do zippers if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. That's just another still purchase. It open. Yeah, it makes a bad for it. Mm -hmm. You know, this was made for the outdoor for outdoor furniture, but it didn't have outdoor foam. So, you know, it is what it is. Just bring it inside. If you don't have outdoor foam. You know, a little trick in case you don't know, you can take a steamer, and I'll show you real fast in the next uh, moment or two, and you can temporarily bring it back to life. So you see it's kind of rounded here, rounded there, rounded here, <laughs> and rounded there. Well, because it's been compressed for so long. So we can take some steam and bring it back to life, but it is only temporary. So if you want to do that, you can do that, and I'll show you real quick. So as I was saying, watch the steamer here. It brings your phone back to life. But it is somewhat only temporary. <laughs> Don't use your iron because you might, uh, that'd be a problem. You're going to burn. Get right. sticky hands afterwards. Just put Can't it over open top. them anymore. <laughs> put them over top of your, God, God this thing stinks. <laughs> so it's filling, <laughs> it's filling it up. And All those farts are coming out. <laughs> They're revived, man. They are, man. So, this is a tough business. We don't like it too much. Oh, my God. But basically, the steam brings back the foam to life, just yeah. like that, okay? So, you hover yourself over top of your stove with a big uh, stew pot. That's right. Let the steam come out and bring your cushions back to life, folks. But it is only temporary. Why you want to do this temporarily? I don't I know. Don't know. But it looks good when we deliver it. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's all that matters. All right. So we're going to steam this. We're going to put a little day crown on there. And then we're going to shove that sucker into the cover. Okay? <laughs> and I think he's the only one drinking. Now that you know that you can steam a cushion a little bit back to life, mm -hmm. we put a little day crown over top of this one. And the next step is to get it into the cover. Now, if you're working with Daycron rather than just ties, the trick or a mm, good idea right. would be to cover these up because it will stick if you have Daycron. So fold it on. Even so, just do it because it, it sticking to the uh, foam is not fun either. Uh, fold it over on itself, basically. Yeah, basically. All right. A little All fun right. fact, isn't it, that the guy who inv invented Velcro mm -hmm. did off of like a sticker that was on a, like a little bush or something like that. Did so it sticks to everything. What I heard, the story goes, he was walking his dog and he'd come back and he found, when he would come back, this happened several times, when he came back, he had these burrs sticking to him and he was fascinated. So he figured out through a microscope what was actually making them stick to his clothing. Mm -hmm. And um, he uh, copied that and that's how we have Velcro today. So it was found in nature first. So Grant's going to shove this into the hole. The best thing to do is to, um, maybe I shouldn't say hole, but shoving into the opening is going to fold it over and work it in slowly. Okay? Like many people do, we shove it in. Yeah, just shove it. So basically, uh, to get it through the hole, you fold it over and work one side at a time. Okay? And he's flipping it over to showing you how it's done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you get it going pretty well... You can start just flipping it to the main sides instead of doing all four sides. Yeah. So, start so. working one side in, flip it back over, keep going, going, going. I guess we have to close these because there's no way that uh, Daycron's going to touch those. You never up. know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when he gets this done, Next we'll year. get back to you. Until then, cut! Okay, Grant got it into the cover, and it's looking very good. Now, the next step is we're going to sew the bottom up, okay? All right. So what we're going to do is take these. Oh, this one's frame. That's okay. We're taking these, um, these ends here, and we're going to fold them in approximately three-eighths of an inch, or if not a half. Right, and as we uh, allow for. Right. In the, so it gives us like an extra three-eighths of an inch, as we've already stated many times. Right. So you see that there, simply folding it over like that. Right. And I'm going to take a stick pin. Let's grab one. I got three. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, straight in. And sorry. Mm -mm. Now, this method is because you don't have to have a... Uh, 
zipper. And we just close it like that. So we're going to do that all the way closed, and then we'll meet you at the sewing machine, close this thing up, and uh, close the video up. Yeah. Pretty much you're done. Alright, so we are, we are done. We Let me are. pick this back up. That's right. Put it on top. <laughs> they look great. We know that Joey's going to like them. And if you're looking to make outdoor cushion covers or kitchen pads, now you know what to do. Definitely. Simply buy an inexpensive one from a box store and just duplicate it. Or just follow these instructions and you'll be fine. And then return it back to the box store when you're done. I would. No. No, actually, we would keep it. But nonetheless, yeah. you can make these very easily and cheaply. Yeah. Okay? So, we totally appreciate all the comments that you give Definitely. us. Sometimes, if not all the times, it gets very difficult to reply. To all of them. It's very hard because we've got to run the business at the same time. But we do want to pass on this information because it's very important that you save money and or, if you need to, have a second income. And please tell us if you do use this as a second income because it is very encouraging to us to let it you, us know that we are helping it makes a big difference because we'd like more and more and more people to know how to do this. So if you're looking to learn how to do this, what little bit we offer you, we hope that it makes a difference. Definitely. And please let us know, as he said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't but, forget to subscribe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to tell a friend. Please do. Very important. Because it does make a difference to us. It okay. Does. Small video, easy cushions, outdoor are very popular. These are just basically pads, and you can do this yourself very easily. Follow the instructions, and uh, you can have as many as you want. So now you know what to do. Thanks we'll see for you watching. next time.